think you really spruce up the office, Miss Philodendron. Oh, oh I'm gonna call you Phyllis. Don't you look good, Phyllis? Come in. <coughs> I mean, uh, come in. Uh, were you just talking to someone? No. Why? <laughs> Starlight, I have something very important to discuss with you. If this is about leaving early yesterday, I didn't have any students on my schedule, and Trixie was having a magical emergency, which actually turned out to be nothing. <laughs> it's not anything like that. <clears throat> Twilight Sparkle, the princess of friendship, in light of her impending ascension to the throne of Equestria, and in anticipation of her many duties and responsibilities forthwith, does hereby intend to make good on her previous offer to you, Starlight Glimmer, of replacing her as head mayor of the School of Friendship. I want you to take over the school when I move to Canterlot. I know. It's just so amazing. I'm a little... Do you think I'm really up for it? Of course you do. I've covered for you every time you've had to run off and save Equestria, but I mean, yes. Of course. Thank you. Ugh! You're welcome. And I can't think of any pony who'd be better for the job. I'm a little nervous and excited. I'm mostly just nervous. I understand. Of course, I'll have a lot of important responsibilities as ruler of Equestria, but I'll always be available to help whenever <gasps> you need. Are you supposed to be at a royal etiquette lesson with Celestia and Luna right now? Right! Uh, can't underestimate the important responsibility of royal napkin placement. Wow. I mean, no biggie, right, Phyllis? I've totally got this. <laughs> Tons of fun. A beautiful heart, faithful and strong. Sharing kindness. It's an easy feat. And magic makes it all complete. You have mine. Do you know you are my very best friends? You know I'm nothing but proud that you've been officially offered the position of head mayor. Thanks. But... I can't help wondering if it's going to cut into our social schedule. What do you mean? Take now, for example. Instead of heading to the delightful lunch I had planned, we're striding with determination toward what I can only assume is Twilight's office. Obviously, our lunch is super important, but so is taking over the school. And the only pony who's really run the School of Friendship is the Princess of Friendship. And I'm worried about doing it all alone, so I want to get as much advice from Twilight as I can while she's still here. But Twilight's never really done anything alone. She always has her friends. But that just gave me an idea! Thanks, Trixie! You can give good advice when you don't mean to. Uh, thanks? Are we still doing lunch? Getting royal place settings just right is a lot harder than it looks. Okay, uh, I know how busy you are, but I wanted to talk to you about running the school because, honestly, I was a bit worried about taking it over all on my own. But I just realized you never did it alone. Having a friend help out is pretty great. Exactly! So, what do you think about me hiring a vice head mayor to help run things? I trust you to run the school any way you want. And if that means hiring a vice head mayor, I think it's a great idea. Really? Like you said, I've always had ponies around to help. And don't worry, you can always call on me uh, to- Twilight, a Rarity says you were supposed to be at the boutique five minutes ago for your second fitting for the coronation gown. Ugh, how many fittings are there gonna be? A lot. Anyway, good luck finding your vice head mayor. I know you'll pick the right pony for the job. Wow. I heard the whole thing, and all I can say is, I am humbled. Uh, why? I hadn't ever considered it, but hearing you say it out loud made me realize what a great and powerful vice head there I'll be. Plus, we get to work and socialize at the same time. Uh, well, sure, that would be fun, but I can't just give you the job. Oh, 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 no, of course not. I imagine there's a lengthy process to go through before you inevitably hire the best pony for the position. Wink. 
Exactly. I'll probably interview several ponies. Of course. Several. Wink. Why do you keep saying wink? I'm not saying wink. Wink. <laughs> I'm glad you all decided to be part of the search for the School of Friendship's vice head mayor. Honestly, if you're looking for some pony to fundraise, I can bring in enough bits to have several buildings named after me. Well, that's not the primary responsibility of the vice head mayor, but any pony is welcome to apply. I think the selection process I've come up with is pretty special. Albeit unnecessary. Wink. Ahem. Since you all have to prove you have what it takes to be vice head mayor, I've designed the interview in three stages. Each stage will test a different skill the vice head mayor needs. Only those who do well will move through the stages until finally the best candidate rises to the top. So, without further ado, it's time for stage one, substituting for the teachers. Well, well, well. Once the students get a sample of my great and powerful instruction, they might not want to go back to the regular faculty. Hmm. Wow, that seam is so straight. You really learned how to sew from mending apple sacks on the farm? Mm, yep. Obviously, loyalty is the foundation of friendship and trust. But nothing gets more loyalty than a big stack of bits. This book on business will teach you all how to earn your own. Chapter One, Equity. Pre-Equestria era, year 1322, Abraxius the Bull did... Ooh, a bunch of boring stuff. But for a really long time. Okay, I know history's important, but I never learned any of it, and look how I turned out. Okay, Phyllis, obviously those three are moving on, but what about the rest? Mm-hmm, I think we're in agreement on this one. Oh, I know what you're gonna say, but it would be so much fun to have my vice head mayor be a friend. She just needs a little more hoof-holding than some of the others, but it could still work out, right? Starlight, I've given this a lot of thought. And even though I still believe naps are a valid use of class time, you'll be the one running the school. So if you say no naps, then no naps. And I know I can be a little stubborn and not the best listener, but I just can't wait for us to tackle this job as a team. Two great and powerful friends taking on the world. And I know you still have to go through all this interview stuff. Wink. But I just had to tell you how excited I am. See, I told you it could work. Oh. All right, remaining vice head mayor candidates, welcome to stage two. All of you are here because you performed well, or well enough, to face your next challenge, parent-teacher conferences. The vice head mayor will need to be a master communicator, and I can't think of a better test of that than meeting with our students and their parents or guardians. I eagerly look forward to sharing my love of science with both progeny and progenitors. Indeed. An orchestra is made up of different parts, and good communication is the key to harmony. Mm, yep. A lifetime on stage has taught me that good communication is essential to holding your audience's attention, which is why Trixie is also known as a great and powerful communicator. 
Life at the School of Friendship is like a song. And although she started out singing her part pianissimo, Ocellus is now soloing fortissimo. That's good, right? <laughs> Indeed. The science curriculum at the school is somewhat lacking, but Yona has taken to the subject like a yak to smashing. If fostered, I believe she could easily blaze a trail and expand our understanding of science itself. Next best! Next best! Next best! Gallus is a fantastic student. He's even taught me a thing or two about napping. Yeah. Is that why you're putting me to sleep? Um, excuse me? I don't know why I have to come to these things. Well, most parents or guardians want to be involved in our students' lives. Maybe we should find a different representative from Griffinstone to be Gallus's guardian. Oh, that'd be great. If you find one, let me know! I'm so confused. You're saying Silverstream is exuberant? Uh, yep. And enthusiastic? Uh, yep. But aren't those the same? And are they good? I mean, you could be trying to tell me she's unfocused, but then you might just be explaining that you appreciate her high energy. Uh, nope, uh, yep, uh, maybe. There seems to be a lot of nuance here, and I just want to make sure I understand exactly what you're saying. So what are you saying? Uh... Gallus doesn't need to know I'm proud of him, and he certainly doesn't need me trekking all the way to Ponyville. Good, because you're no longer welcome! Oh, well, fine with me! Trixie, what happened? I'm not sure. But we'll have one less conference to worry about next semester. I really appreciate your honesty, Big Mac, and you're right. Parents expect a lot of detailed communication when it comes to their kids. And if you aren't comfortable with that, Vice Head Mayor probably isn't the job for you. Yeah, nope. Starlight, I know why you wanted to see me, and you don't have to worry. Oh, uh, good. It's thoughtful that you'd want to check in on me after my shocking confrontation with Grandpa Gruff. But never fear, I shall recover. Trixie, that's not exactly what I wanted to talk to you about. You can't get into a shouting match with parents or guardians. For the final stage of the interview process, you'll each have to put together a field trip. And if you really do want the job, I need yours to be exceptional. Because if I had to pick a vice head mayor right now, it wouldn't be you. Oh, I see what you're doing. Obviously, you're not gonna give the job to some pony else, but you wanna see my best. Well, message received. Wink. Ugh, Trixie, I... The great and powerful Trixie is about to pull out all the stops. I hope you're ready for the most exceptional field trip to ever grace this school! Is it wrong for me to think she might actually pull it off? Oh, don't answer that. <sighs> Not looking forward to the performance? I know Octavia loves music, but a field trip to a classical music performance isn't my idea of an exciting time. we'd be arranging field trips, I knew right away I wanted to take you all to my lab. I can think of no better trip than one through the quantum field. I am referring to time travel. I've been working on a temporal transportation device. A chair. And three, four, five, Congratulations! You are now five seconds into the future. You see, we are all already time travelers. Hm? Who's next? Uh, now what? Oh, I hadn't actually thought that much beyond this. <sighs> Ponies and other students, welcome to the greatest and most powerful field trip of your lives! Where are you and friends going? 
I am thrilled you asked, because today we're not doing a normal, old, boring field trip where you go somewhere. So, not field trip. Au contraire, I could have easily taken you to Froggy Bottom Bog, but we don't need to leave the comfort of the classroom for our field trip. I can bring the field trip to us! Trixie, what did you do? Well, I found the perfect little patch of bog to teleport into the school. I guess I just didn't consider the possibility that a hive of flash bees might have nested there. Admit I did. Oh, we'll talk about it later. Um, Starlight? Hey there. So, um, they're gone? Yes. Nice teamwork, am I right? Are you kidding? I don't know what team you're on, but it isn't mine. This was a disaster. It was dangerous. I think words you're looking for are great and powerful. It wasn't even acceptable! You went from not taking it seriously to blowing things so out of proportion you put every creature in danger. And I wanted to work with a friend so much I ignored the fact that you would never be right for the job! I'm confused. What are you saying? I'm saying you'll never be vice head mayor. But, but I thought you created the position for me. Why would you think that? I created the position because I need help. But I can't think of any way that you would ever help me. Twilight's friends always helped her. Oh, that's because Twilight's friends are competent. They care about what they're doing. And they know how to do it. Well, I guess I won't take up any more of your time, Headmare Starlight. Starlight? I just thought I'd check in to see how the search for a vice headmare was going. A lot better now. Okay. I really wanted it to be a friend, so I ended up pushing aside some pretty big signs that it wasn't gonna work out. Not every pony is right for every job, but every pony has something to contribute. The trick is figuring out what. What if you and your friend can't figure it out? If you have a job to do, you have to decide what's best and be upfront and honest, even if that means you can't work with a friend on it. So, I guess that means talking to them at the beginning instead of stringing them along until you get so frustrated you totally lose it and say a bunch of really awful things? Pretty much. Oh. Trixie? I know you're in there. Well, you're wrong. I'm sorry for all those things I said. I just really wanted it to work out. Even though I knew it probably wouldn't. I should have said something sooner. Obviously, we can't have what we want, because I'm terrible at everything and could never help you with anything. You aren't terrible, and you have a lot of great qualities. Maybe not vice head mayor qualities, but great and powerful friend qualities. Well, you really stand by the ponies you care about. Gallus even said no creatures ever stuck up for him the way you did with Grandpa Gruff. It would have been nice to run the school together, but not every pony is right for every job. I know how you take your responsibilities seriously, and maybe I should have known I wasn't exactly a perfect fad. If it makes you feel any better, no pony was. What do you mean? Well, Dr. Hooves has decided to go back to his experiments, and Octavia is worried the responsibilities of Vice Head Mare will take too much time away from her music. Maybe getting a Vice Head Mare was a bad idea. Starlight, obviously you'd like some help, and hiring a Vice Head Mare is a great idea. But who could it be? 
Well, you need some pony who's responsible, like you, and detail-oriented, like Twilight. And smart, obviously. It is a school, after all. It would be nice if I got along with them, since having it be a friend can't work out. Maybe it can. And I knew as soon as I read Trixie's scroll that it was the exact right thing for me to do. But what about being Flurry Heart's crystaller? Well, honestly, now that Flurry Heart's a little older, there really isn't much for me to do outside of the occasional tradition or festival. And working at a school is what I always thought I'd do. I mean, if you'll have me. Are you kidding? You're hired! I had a feeling this would work out. Oh, Trixie, thank you so much. Between being insightful when I want to be and giving good advice when I don't mean to, I suppose I can be a pretty good friend. More than that, actually. You really did give good advice. And you helped me talk through the problem of finding the right pony for the job. And we know you care about the students. Trixie, the great and powerful advice giver, problem talk through her, and student care about her. Eh, I think I'll go with friend. Friend is perfect. But there's a position here at the school you might be right for, too. What would you say to being the School of Friendship's new student counselor? I'd say this office needs a bit of redecorating. Potted plants scream desperation. Phyllis, no!